Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Jessup. Okay, so, so guys, um, I kind of want to tell you a story tonight, uh, which is kind of why I came here. But um, before I get to the story, I need to really quickly recap in about 30 seconds a couple of tenants about evolution, right? Um, the first tenant I want to recap is uh, competition, right? And we're all familiar with competition. This is where there's a winner and a loser. Which is good because it helps improve the gene pool, but it's also bad because there's a loser, you know, there's a guy who's not fast or strong enough to compete. But there's another tenant of evolution as well, which is collaboration. Uh, collaboration is simply when two entities come together because they're better off working together than if they were alone. Uh, and we uh, see this all the time in nature. What you've got here are three mitochondria inside a human muscle cell. Um, you see it in other situations like flocks of birds and even human civilization, really. They're all examples of collaboration in action. And, um, Collaboration ends up, by contrast to competition, creating win-win rather than win-loss situations. Um, and it's interesting, if you take this idea that society, as well as genetics, actually forms a part of our evolution, then what you start to realise is that it's actually collaboration rather than competition that's driving us forward. So, parking those blanket assertions for a second, let's get on to the nuns. Um, so, so, nuns are fantastic, right? For, for a bunch of reasons, but um, in particular for psychology studies. Because nuns all basically live the same lifestyle from when they start becoming a nun to when they stop becoming a nun, which is usually about when they die. So, <laughs> so, so in 1930, uh, 180 nuns, aged about 25 or so, uh, were asked by their mother superior to write a one-page essay about their lives. And uh, 70 years later, a group of researchers from the University of Kentucky dug up these essays and they assessed the language in them for what they call positive affect, which is basically optimism. And they compared the optimism score that they found for each nun to how long that nun actually managed to live for. And what they found was really remarkable. Uh, for the nuns that had uh, scored highly in optimism, they were far more likely, statistically significantly more likely, to survive into, late no into their late 90s. In other words, optimism actually helped you live longer, which is kind of a remarkable idea. And um, it caused a bunch of controversy, and there were a bunch of other studies done by other groups on other populations. But they all ended up coming to more or less the same conclusion, which is that optimism can help you live longer, which means it actually can have a, an effect on the physiology of the body. Which, uh, and this actually caused a little bit of a stir in the world of psychology, because psychology up until that point, um, until the 2000s, had been basically about making crazy people less miserable. Um, and, and, and now people start to say, well, based on this evidence, maybe there's an even broader goal we can have for psychology. Maybe we can actually be focused on making the lives of normal people better by making them happier. And so this sort of clique of what so-called positive psychologists actually started to take this on as a professional mission and apply a bit of rigor to it and uh, start looking at what actually does make us happy, what contributes to it, how does it vary. And one of the first things they found, um, not surprisingly, of course, our happiness varies like day to day or month to month, depending on what's going on. But, um, but that happiness actually oscillates across a kind of set range. You know, we've actually got, over a long enough period of time, a fixed level of happiness. Um, but that's, that fixed level varies significantly between different people. And so what causes that difference in, uh, in set level of happiness? You might have guessed that mum and dad are a big part of that contribution. Um, it turns out that 50% of our base optimism score can actually be predicted by giving the same test to our parents. And if, so that actually now gives us two ideas, two, two concepts that actually link optimism to evolution. Um, we've got a, a link to physiology and we've got a link to pedigree. And if you take this additional blanket assertion that uh, optimism might be something we've evolved, the next question is why? How does optimism help us in the wild against badly drawn monsters on slides? Negative emotions like this guy make heaps of sense. You know, negative emotions like we were angry at people who trespassed or things that trespass against us. We fear things that, uh, you know, might hurt us. And that encourages us, it encourages us <laughs> in behaviours that, that, that make sense in competitive environments. But, uh, but what does optimism do for us? Well, when we look at optimists, we notice a bunch of interesting traits. Optimists tend to internalise their achievements and externalise their setbacks, which means that they're generally more persistent, they're more likely to achieve the goals they set themselves, and they're actually more likely to be leaders. They're usually often more charismatic. And what this all adds up to is that optimists are generally better in win-win situations, in these kind of collaborative environments that we find ourselves in. And I think that's a really powerful idea, the idea that optimism might actually be uh, um, helping us, uh, not only might be a product of evolution, but might even be helping us in uh, advancing the species forward. So, in summary, I think perhaps what nuns can teach us about evolution is that uh, we need to optimise for optimism. Because not only like, might it help you on a personal level in, uh, uh, in helping you live longer, but you might even be contributing towards the longevity of the human species. 
And uh, so yeah, and that's it. That's for me. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, then uh, and hit me up on some of the some of the things I've talked about, then you can either buy me a drink at the bar or you can hit me up online. Thank you for coming. Yeah.